Okay, welcome to another video. Uh, this video I'm going to be showing you how um, I go through the process and workflow of stitching uh, horizontal panoramas. Now this particular panorama was shot with a drone, it was a DJI uh, Phantom 4 Advanced um, and it came together pretty well, so which I'm, I'm super happy about as always. So for this image it was, uh, as I mentioned, shot with a drone. Um, it was shot uh, late in the afternoon, uh, as you can see the sun starting to well and truly go down. Uh, settings for the image were ISO 100, obviously being daylight we don't need to uh, boost the ISO at all. There was plenty of light around to, uh, to capture with uh, a sufficiently fast shutter speed to avoid blur. Uh, eight and a half, uh, oh, sorry, 8.8 millimeter uh, focal length. Obviously, that's the fixed focal length on the camera that comes with the Phantom 4 Advanced. F6.3 and 1 160th of a second. Now, the reason that I've used those, uh, that aperture and shutter speed, um, the aperture 6.3, I find on this camera is a really good point uh, for sharpness um, for the lens. So anywhere around F5.6 to F8 on this camera, I tend to find I get the sharpest results. So that's why I've gone with that aperture and that was my primary setting aside from a low ISO. Um, and then 1 60th of a second was the shutter speed that worked out to be the best option uh, for a correct exposure. The original exposures were slightly overexposed, which I tend to do with uh, raw or uh, DNG uh, files in this case. And the reason is, is that I, I tend to find just slightly overexposing and then pulling back the exposure in post, I get a better result. I get a cleaner result. Obviously making sure that I haven't overexposed it so much that I'm losing detail in the highlights. So this uh, stitch is fairly straightforward. Um, and this is a great example of uh, stitching in Lightroom. Uh, one of the things I like about uh, stitching images in Lightroom um, is that uh, you actually end up, the stitched file, uh, if you're stitching from a raw or digital negative file, you end up with a, a, a DNG, uh, which is a really nice thing because then you can work on the stitched file or the panorama uh, with all the flexibility that raw gives you. Um, so it just, it just allows that little bit more flexibility. As opposed to Photoshop, when you stitch it together, you end up either with a PSD or a, a TIFF. Um, depending on what you save the file as. So it just means that you don't have quite the flexibility uh, that you would have in working with uh, that raw or digital negative file. So that's one of the advantages of Lightroom that I really like. What I've also found in stitching images with Lightroom based on the way that I shoot, uh, I've never really had any major issues with uh, stitching images together, whether it's a horizontal or a vertical panorama, um, which I've found for many years with Photoshop as well. I've found the stitching software to work really well. You know, whether or not that's because of the process that I shoot or just the software or a combination of both, uh, I don't know, but um, I've, I just find that uh, I have a, a really good success rate with panoramas. Now, having said that, I've shot a lot of panoramas over the years in a lot of different environments in the Himalayas in Nepal, in Antarctica, uh, on all the travels that I've done uh, all over the world as well as commercial work that I've done uh, based in Australia. So for that reason, um, I've, I've shot a lot of panoramas. It would be hundreds and hundreds of panoramas uh, quite easily. So I think I've just I've got my workflow down pat and coupled with the software, uh, I have a, um, a really high success rate. Uh, the vast majority um, are all handheld. Uh, the only time that I tend to use a tripod for uh, shooting panoramas is when my shutter speed is so slow that um, uh, I, I need to have the camera stabilized in some way. All right, so we're just in the library module at the moment. You can see we've got the uh, four images there. They're actually not in the correct order of what they should be stitched in from left to right, but uh, as we'll see, that doesn't actually matter in this case. So these are the full resolution digital negative files uh, that I have there. I've, I've applied some edits to them, um, not a great deal, but uh, just enough to have them aesthetically looking roughly where I want them to look. Moving over to the develop module, um, you can see uh, a slightly bigger preview of all the images. Um, beautiful day across the West McDonnell Ranges. Uh, I, I was based out of Alice Springs for some uh, uh, um, work at the time and uh, took my drone over and uh, enjoyed this beautiful afternoon light. Uh, it was absolutely stunning. Um, so from here what I'm going to do with all four images selected down the bottom left hand corner we go up to photo 
and photo merge and across to panorama and you can see the shortcut there is control M just to make it a little bit quicker and easier so I'll just click on that and you can see it's immediately goes into this new dialog box panorama merge preview um, and it was very quick in stitching those together and you can see that stitched together with uh, with absolute um, uh, clarity and no issues at all there's no uh, ghosting or anything that I can see uh, I'm just going to uncheck you can see I've got checked auto crop there so I'm just going to uncheck that and you can see that it has actually uh, had to uh, I guess warp the images quite a bit to be able to stitch them together seamlessly not entirely unexpected at all. Um, the the 35 millimeter equivalent of this lens is 24 millimeters. So if you can imagine you're shooting a panorama with 24 millimeters, that's sort of considered on the wide end of uh, what I would normally use. For a conventional camera, I tend to aim to use around a minimum 35 millimeter um, lens when I'm shooting panoramas so this is a little bit wider hence the software needs to warp the images a little bit more to make them uh, join together seamlessly so with the boundary warp you can see that's set at zero at the moment if I auto crop then it just crops out all of that white stuff but you can you, around the edges but you can see that it's cropped quite heavily uh, so if I uncheck that and if we just play around with boundary warp just a little bit you can see that it, it continues to warp those images um, just to make them a little bit uh, bigger and, and for there to be less of that white border so we, we can maximize the size of our final image and potentially our final print should we choose to do so. So then um, we can click on autocrop and we don't lose as much of the frame. Just to be aware with boundary warp, you don't wanna push the file too far. Uh, the reason being is the more that the file is warped, the more that the pixels are pushed, you can experience some softness in the file. And generally speaking, um, with a panorama, they tend to get printed quite large. So you just want to be aware of that. You don't want to push the boundaries too much, if that makes sense. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with how far we've gone there. I'm just going to click on auto crop so that it, it actually crops out that white border. Um, I mean, the other option is you can uh, not crop it and then uh, um, fill in those extra um, areas. It probably wouldn't be too much work, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm just going to use auto crop today. Then if we come down to the bottom right hand corner of that dialog box and we hit merge, we can see that it's going through uh, on the top right hand, sorry, top left hand corner is going through that process of creating the panorama. All right, that's completed. And if you have a look down the very bottom at the thumbnails, you can see there's an extra image down there now, and that's the completed stitched panorama. And as expected, it is a DNG. So now, whether or not your normal editing software is Lightroom or Adobe Camera Raw and Photoshop, you have that full flexibility of uh, being able to work on that as a digital negative with all the highlight shadow recovery tools exposure tools and white balance tools that you normally have at your disposal uh, so that certainly gives us the flexibility we would normally be looking for with a digital negative all right so that is the process for stitching a panorama uh, in uh, in lightroom hope it's uh it's been clear and helpful and uh look forward to seeing you again in the future take care Oh, <laughs> oh,